So today I wanted to continue on with the large format series and cover how to repair light leaks on the bellows of your large format view camera. So stick around to see how that's done. So over the last few weeks, uh, various parts of my large format kit have been arriving and I'll probably do a separate video on that once a couple more things arrive and just kind of go over what's in my kit. But now I'm almost ready to take it out for its first shoot and see how it does. Uh, but there's one thing in particular that I still have to do first, and that is to check the bellows and the other obvious parts of the camera for light leaks. Now this camera is essentially just a light proof box, or it's supposed to be anyway. And focusing is accomplished by changing the relationship between the subject you're shooting, the lens on the front standard, and the film plane mounted on the rear standard. Now since there's no focusing motors or anything inside these lenses, that's achieved by increasing or decreasing the distance between the front and rear standards like this. In order to stay flexible enough to accommodate for this movement, this camera uses what's known as a bellow system to allow the front standard with the lens on it to be moved independent of the film plane and keep the film still in complete darkness. And that's what this guy's for. Now they make different types of bellows. Some of them are just a bag that goes in between the front and rear standard. But this one is like a kind of a pleated accordion style looking shape that allows it to stretch and compress so you can set up your photo. Now you can probably imagine this part of the camera gets a lot of strain and stress just because every photo you set up on you're going through camera movements and focusing with it. But then also the setup and tear down involved in it too. Over time parts of the bellows can wear through particularly in the corners right here where the pleating is like creased over. And uh, you'll start to get little light leaks that'll show up on your film as like streaks of overexposure and just ruin your photograph. So how do you check for that? Well, you could just load some film up in it and go shoot it um, and see how the images come back after they get developed. Uh, that's kind of basically what I do with my 35 millimeters, which they don't have bellows on them, but they do have light seals on the back and stuff. But roll film isn't all that terribly expensive anyway, so I don't think it was that big of a risk to just try it out and see see what you got. With large format though, that could get expensive real quick. So depending on what you're shooting, it may not even tell you the whole story. So if you're shooting a lot of things that are like an infinity focus where the bellows are kind of shorter, um, you may not even notice that you have light leaks until you're shooting something later that's like just really stretches out the bellows or if you're shooting a direct sunlight or something like that, then you'll all of a sudden have all these streaks of light in your photos. Fortunately, with large format, everything's pretty big and pretty modular, particularly with this camera, since the system's kind of designed to be modular and interchangeable. So everything comes apart. The bellows actually comes off this camera really quickly with no tools or anything. You can just inspect it in your hands. So it's not like some intricate, like clockwork piece camera or something that everything's gonna fall out of if you open it up. They're pretty straightforward and you can inspect them for things like light leaks. Now, I first learned to even look for this problem by watching Scott Walton's video on the same topic, which I'll link to up here in the corner. Scott actually seeded the idea of me doing this video, so thank you, Scott. Uh, and if you haven't checked out his channel yet, he does beautiful work, and you should totally head over there and see what he's up to. So this bellows is actually in pretty good condition. Visually, I didn't see anything major wrong with it, and it looks really nice, but I did find a couple pinhole leaks in it. So I'll show you how I found those, and then we'll talk about how to go about fixing them. So it's really pretty simple. You just need a flashlight or some type of light source that you can fit inside the camera and shine around and look for leaks. Uh, this one for me works really well just because it's got this 90 degree angle twist function and I can fit it inside the camera and get it in the corners really well. And then it's really powerful too, so it's easy to make out all the leaks. And then we're gonna take either the lens board or the ground glass off your camera, whichever one's easiest on your system. Uh, for me, mine's really modular, so it's super easy to go either way. Um, it's just real quick without tools. And I and I'm in. Then we're taking the camera into a dark area. In my case, it was my laundry room since I could close the door behind me and control the light with the switch. Uh, but then you want to extend the bellows reasonably far enough apart to where you can kind of see in between the individual creases. Then we're going to take our flashlight and run it through the inside with the lights off while we watch the outside looking for little pinholes to shine through. If you're in a smaller room like I was, it'll probably help to either have a lens on the front with a shutter closed or a film holder in the back covering the ground glass, just so that the light from your flashlight doesn't spill through the other side and illuminate the room, uh, making it harder for you to see the pinholes, uh, which is actually probably a good way to check the whole film plane area too around your ground glass, make sure you don't have any light leaks there as well. So in my case with these pinholes, I just had a bunch of little pieces of a post-it note ready. And in the darkness, I could find the pinhole with the flashlight and cover up my finger. And then I just reach over and grab a piece of this and stick that post-it note on there. Then I could go turn the lights on and go work on it. 
Okay, so you checked your bellows and you found some leaks. So now what do you do to fix them? Uh, well, you could replace the bellows outright. Uh, and if it was bad enough, I might actually elect to do that. Uh, if you can find a replacement for your camera. But in my case, it was pretty minor, so I took a crack at fixing it. While digging through the comments on Scott's video uh, and then doing a quick little bit of Google research, I came across a couple common ways that people were repairing these. Um, and considering what materials to use, uh, we first got to figure out what the criteria is for our use case. So one, it's got to be light proof, right? Uh, that means something opaque. Uh, and to match camera and not look cartoonish, I wanted something that was kind of dark or black to match the bellows. Two, it's got to be flexible. So the bellows has to expand and contract and move around. So uh, it can't interfere with the normal operation of the camera. And we also don't want it to fall off the first time it like stretches or bends. Three, it's got to adhere well to fabrics or some similar type of material. And then it also has to be viscous enough to bridge gaps and fill holes. Uh, four, ideally it should be waterproof uh, because you don't want to just wash away in case you, know, you get caught out in the weather or something like that. So it should be sort of weatherproof at some point. So in considering all the criteria, uh, I went shopping on Amazon and this is what I came up with. Automotive black RTV silicone liquid electrical tape, and Mars black acrylic paint. Then I also got some cheap paint brushes to use as applicators. So I figured it'd be interesting to grab the top three things I could think of, you know, that seemed promising and kind of shoot them out to see which one had the best properties. So now that I have my contenders, I needed a piece of testing medium to apply them to and see how they perform. Uh, considering all the criteria that we laid out, uh, the best thing I could think of is a piece of fabric mesh. This one is a chunk from a cheap laundry bag. It has really, really fine holes in it. Now, if your bellows looks anything like this, uh, you might consider either a new camera or a different pastime. <laughs> but I figured it would make for a pretty decent extreme or worst case scenario, so we're going with it. So first up was the RTV silicone. Uh, this particular tube is a Permatex brand gasket making variety that you can get in just about any auto parts store. This was definitely viscous and filled the holes in the mesh pretty well. I applied a nice blob to see how it was to apply with a brush, and it didn't go too bad. Uh, I realized a little too late that it was seeping through the mesh onto my table, so I had to go get a nice thing of paper towel to put behind it. Once done, I had a nice buildup of material. Next up was the liquid electrical tape. Uh, this was by far the worst as far as fumes go, so I would recommend applying this somewhere with some ventilation. Here I am mixing it up well, like it says to do on the label. This was like a stringy kind of gunk, but it was less thick than the silicone and brushed on easier. It seeped all the way through the mesh a little bit and got stuck on the paper towel behind it. Last is the Mars Black Acrylic Paint. This had surprisingly good coverage. Uh, it was super easy to apply with a brush, you know, since it's designed for that. <laughs> it also seeped through the mesh and got onto the paper towel on the back a little bit too. So now I had my nice blobs of patching material. Uh, and I left those to dry according to the package recommendations. And uh, here's what I learned, which was kind of not what I expected, to be honest. The RTV silicone did a fine job. Uh, it's super flexible, uh, but it just kind of sits on top of the mesh like chewing gum or something. Um, in a pinch, I think this would do just fine, but it, it wasn't the best of the three, which I actually thought it was going to be, to tell you the truth. The liquid electrical tape uh, almost became part of the mesh. It's permanent. like. It filled in the holes really well, but it also like penetrated through it and like grips into the fabric really well. Uh, it dries flexible, yet it's like tough as nails. I was really impressed. So I, had, I had no idea it was going to be like that. The acrylic paint uh, also did seep through the mesh. Uh, and when it dried, it was pretty tough too, but it didn't quite cover as good as the liquid electrical tape. And it took a lot longer to dry to the touch. So if you're going to do multiple coats, then it'd take you a long time. So based on the findings of my super not so scientific little tests, uh, I decided to go with a liquid electrical tape. Uh, it was viscous enough to cover, you know, the pinholes in the camera, but it also gripped the fabric really well. It had a lot more holding strength than the RTV did. So I thought. Um, the RTV, you could almost like pick off the mesh with your fingers once it dried. And the liquid electrical tape was in there. Whatever you decide to go with on your camera, uh, I would probably suggest applying it to the inside of the bellows. Uh, that's kind of why I wanted something that worked well with fabrics, because that's kind of the sort of texture that's in there. And it gives the material something more to kind of hold on to, some more holding strength. You probably could patch these holes from the outside, 
Uh, but the outside's got like this kind of coated glossy texture on it. And I got a feeling it probably wouldn't last this long, uh, but it's up to you. And then plus from the inside, it kind of, it looks cleaner because you can't really see it. So most of the holes I've covered or pretty much all the holes I covered, uh, I got with a single application. It was thick enough material, but I imagine you could go over it several times if you had a particularly bad crack or hole or something like that. So that's how I went about fixing my light leaks. Uh, now my bellows and my 4x5 are light tight once again, and uh, I should be ready to go out and shoot with it. So hopefully soon I'll have a in the field video coming, uh, documenting my first experiences ever shooting with this format. So if you want to see how that goes, uh, and if you want to follow my journey into large format film photography, uh, be sure to hit the subscribe button down below. Ring the bell if you want to be notified when those videos come out. So I just want to say thanks for watching. Uh, if you have any cool repair techniques of your own you want to share with us, uh, be sure to put those down in the comments. Uh, maybe we can learn something from you too as well. So, all right. Thanks again and uh, see you guys in the next one.